respect to the honourable brothers and elders, one of the issues, one of the things, one of the realizations that as Muslims we should make is that everything we have is a blessing and a ni'mah from Allah. The hands you have, the feet you have, the eyes and ears you have, this is all a blessing and ni'mah from Allah. Most of the guys who I'm talking to here, you have businesses, you have jobs, everyone can relate to this. If you have a shop and one of your employees decides I'm not going to turn up today for work, you may ask a reason and if it's justified you may give a chance and say okay I'll look past this, I'll give you a second chance. If, for example, you have a chef and he says, I'm not turning up today, bus. Or he comes in at work 4 o'clock, he's supposed to work to 1 o'clock, and then he says at 10 o'clock, I'm going home. Why? Ah, it's can't be bothered. I'm going home. As an employer, you would put your foot down and say, hold on a second, we're contracted, we've got an agreement here. There's an agreement in place. You can't just willy-nilly come as you please. You're paid and subject to a certain contract. And that contract states that you will work X amount of hours. With anything in life, there is an agreement which takes place. <clears throat> Similarly as well, Allah wa ta'ala, He gave us different ni'mas within this worldly life. The job you have is a ni'mah from Allah. The job I have is a ni'mah from Allah. The wealth we have is a ni'mah from Allah. This clothing which I'm wearing is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The watch I'm wearing, the, 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 the devices which we use, the cars we drive, everything from top to bottom, left to right, Everything we have in ta'uddu ni'mat Allahi la tuhsuha. You try and count the blessings of Allah, you will never be able to enumerate them. Even moving away from wealth, would you sell one of your arms for a hundred pound? Thousand pound? Ten thousand pound? How about an eye? Sell an eye. Five grand on the black market. No one would. You'd have to be daft. Because it's worth much more than that. Everything Allah Ta'ala gave us is a ni'mah. Because we look at things of nazar, mashallah, we see someone with a big house, we say, alhamdulillah, hadha min fadli rabbi. We see, mashallah, someone with lots of cars, mashallah, hadha min fadli rabbi. But when we see someone who, okay, perhaps in terms of wealth is not being given that much, but in other ways perhaps that person has. How about health? Health itself is a ni'mah. Health itself is a blessing. How many of us on a daily basis thank and make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that? In the, when we eat food in the food, the sunnah of Rasulullah used to make this, Alhamdulillah, he ladhi at'amana, wasaqana, wa ja'alana muslimin. There's other du'as as well, but this is one du'a. Alhamdulillah, he ladhi, alhamdulillah, at'amana, who fed us, saqana, uh, who gave us water to drink, and made us Muslim. We thank Allah for that. Why do we thank Allah for being Muslim in the same du'a with food? Just as how eating and drinking is important and you thank Allah for that, it's equally important that you thank Allah for the iman Allah gave you. So likewise, Allah Ta'ala gave all these different ni'mas. One of them is this eye which Allah Ta'ala gave us. And Allah knew what was good for insan, knew what was bad for insan. Allah knew what was harmful, what was beneficial. Allah knew what was right, what was wrong. What makes you a Muslim, brother? What, that you eat halal meat? That you celebrate Eid? That our... Other things perhaps we've done, other rituals. My, as you know, I'm half English. My, my nanny eats halal meat. She says she prefers it. It doesn't smell as much. It's more fresh. And she uses a lotta as well. She stayed around our house and got a lot. She got, she come across the lotta and that's where she became addicted. Budna. She got addicted. She goes, nah, this is the best way forward. And... She even like, she, I think she even got something similar like a tasbih hanging in her car. Anyone would see her, they think she must be a Muslim, but she's not. She's English. She's not even, I don't even think you can even qualify and call her even as a Christian. My point of mentioning is this. Symbols don't make us Islam Muslims. If I were to take off these clothes and wear something like that, would I be any less of a Muslim? Of course not. Would I be any less of a Muslim because I don't eat halal chicken, I'd rather eat vegetables? So you see, in our deen, my brothers, what makes us Muslim is that we make ita'at and obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whatever Allah says, I may not understand the hikmah, but I say, in Allah alimun hakim. Allah is all wise. Allah is all knowledgeable. Let's leave it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah mentions in the Quran, in Surah An-Nur, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is ordered, say, tell these believers, يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ Keep the gazes down وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَهُمْ Protect the private parts. 
These two things have come in a verse. Ulama of Tafsir mentioned, why are these two mentioned in a verse? Because there is a correlation between you using your eyes wrong and doing zina. They are both in the same category. How? No one just goes and jumps and does zina. There's steps. Even if you ask a girl, boy, you know, teenagers, they say this. I got up to step 9 with her. Step 10. Step 15. We teach youngsters, so we know the kind of lingo. Step one was just you just exchanged a little look. Step two, you kind of approach the girl and blah, blah. They've got their own mashup point system. But what I'm trying to say is that even Allah Ta'ala knew that the zina is a very big problem in society. It's a big problem amongst human beings. It doesn't promote any khayr and goodness. If you want to have relations with a woman, which is also a necessity and a taqaza of man and woman, then make nikah. Make nikah, fulfill her hukuk, fulfill her rights, have children, no problem. Balki having sex with the wife is sadqa, subhanallah. Having relations with the wife is ajr. There's no sharam in there, molbi saad ke. Ye kya, um kya karim, bhai, this is deen, this is not draconian law. Alhamdulillah, Allah knew insan what he needs. So when Allah mentioned, قُلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّ مِنْ أَبْصَادِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَهُمْ You can control your eyes, protect your private parts. There's a correlation. How? Because when you see someone, that's when you think, wow, she's quite attractive. Or from a girl's point of view, wow, he's quite attractive. That's the first step. Then the second step, then the third step, then the fourth step, then finally ends up to zina. Allah knew this is harmful, so saddul bab they call in Arabic. They shut the door on the issue. Don't even go near it. La taqrabu zina. Don't even go near zina. And one of the things that steps that lead up to that is misusing these eyes. From a worldly point of view, if you tell this to people in a worldly point of view, they think Islam is a bit prescriptive. It's a bit restricted. You can't freely let your nafs reign. We have this conversation, you get me? So with, even some of you working in, in, in your normal workplaces, someone will say, you know, Islam seems very punishing and very restricting and so on. By look, the truth of the matter is, Allah is all wise. This is our um, iman and that is, this is our aqidah. Allah is all wise. If Allah says don't do something, I may not understand the hikmah, but I understand him to be all hakim and alim. Khalas. So if Allah says something, I follow that. I mean, ittiba' of the deen of Allah, Islam, the Quran, the sunnah, the sharia, whatever you want to call it, even though it's a bit of a buzzword nowadays, well it shouldn't be. But I follow this because I have yaqeen in the teachings of Allah. I have yaqeen in the teachings of Rasulullah. Now yes, don't get me wrong. There, ha- there have been some modern day research and so on. And I, I come across a book and I'll share this. There's a book written by Shah Muhammad Hakim Akhtar Sahib Rahmatullah And it's about casting lux for glances. It was a, originally a lecture scra- transcribed and put into a book about the harms of casting lux for glances. He mentions 15 harms, if I recall correctly from that. Anyways, the point of mentioning is this, is that let's just say you don't have, let's just say you don't know any reason why it's harmful. There must be some harm because Allah said it is. Now whether we've come to understand it from a science point of view, a medical point of view, an X, Y, and Z point of view, a Haya point of view, let's leave that to one side. Let's just say you had no knowledge of this at all. By the fact that Allah said it, this should be enough for us. But Allah said it, this is sufficient for us. That's a believer. That's a Muslim. That is a, a person of Iman. That when Allah says something, khalas, there's nothing more ahead of this. Yeah, I can ask... You know how to implement that thing, but I don't be left doubting. One hadith Rasulullah he did say he mentioned another sahmun masmum min sihami iblis. Casting a lust, there's, there's two glances. One is that I'm driving my car, I'm looking where to go, and by chance I'm looking and I'm trying to cross the road and there's a woman there. That's mistake. That's, that's, that's by accident. Like a like a awwal another. For ma baalu bithaniya. Ali radiallahu anhu was asked, you know, by, by someone who looks at a woman by mistake, is that guna? And he said, no, 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 once, like a awwal another, the first another, that's okay, that's understandable. For ma balu why are you looking a second time? Why are you looking the second time? Let me tell you a little joke that happened about this actually. There were some brothers, you know, Jamaat brothers, they come stay in the masjid, do da'wah. So one elder came, there was a Jamaat there, some youngsters joined the Jamaat and they wanted to go for da'wah. So the, 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 what the elder said to me, he said, bye. When you go outside, don't look at women. First nazar is mouth, not the second one. So what happened was a girl walking past, he goes, bam, and he's looking at the girl, like staring at her. And the guy goes, brother, didn't I just say looking at the women was haram? He said, Amir Sahib, you said the first glance is haram. I said, look once, look good. But don't take Islam to that extreme. There, there's no gunjahish for your nafs. 
Oh, like a whole another khata, mistake. Like, acha. That's okay. But look at, oh, toba, second time. Nah, you gotta draw the line. You gotta draw the line. Once accident, no problem. Second time, now you're doing it with shahwa, now you're doing it design, now you're doing it with intent. There's a difference. So this is why first nazar is, is forgiven, not the second one. However, nevertheless, lustful glances, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned, they're like poisonous arrows from the arrows of shaitan. How are they poisonous? Because if you look at someone who's really super attractive, that plays in your mind thereafter. You'll be reminiscing, think, oh man, she was really strikingly hot. And she was like this, and you kind of think, picture the contours of the body. And I look, gentle, we're gentlemen here, yeah? And I say not men, gentlemen, because we're polite people as well. But the reality is, if we don't talk about this stuff, then it just seems that you know, Islam is just namaz and roza. And the, our deen is really encompassing. It teaches us all the khayr of dunya and akhirah. So why wouldn't this be discussed as well? Where is the haya and modesty? This is part of haya. Al-haya u shu'batun min al-iman. Haya is a branch from iman. And this is part of haya. We wouldn't like someone to look at our mother like that, our sister like that. With a sexual lustful desire Well why should you look at someone else's daughter Why should you look at someone else's mother Why should you look at someone else's auntie So Islam is about putting yourself in that person's position Empathic Understanding how another person would feel And that's why one of the reasons why it's not permissible But it's like a poisonous arrow Where you look at someone and you reminisce Man she was like this and she was like this And sometimes when you look into a mirror You have a reality check I can strike someone like that Let's be realistic do you understand where I'm coming from? Because if, you, if, if a person themselves is not that attractive and they're constantly casting lustful glances, it's like basically caging someone and starving them for a week and then putting their arm reaches there and an extra meter away you put a pile of cooked barbecue and say he reached for the food. He's never going to be able to reach for it. Why are you even putting him through that punishment? So similarly as well, when you're going around looking left, right, why are you putting yourself through this torture, this heartache, this pain, this... Sahmun musmoon, this poisonous arrow from shaitan And you're going to be left thinking, looking in the mirror I'm ugly, look at me, look how I look Inferiority complex, depression, anxiety, social phobia Where did it all start from? Casting a lustful glance You see how it, it, it poisons, it poisons society And Allah remkare, let's be realistic I don't like to touch on these subjects But nowadays, if you're not looking outside People are looking on their devices a, a, a quick, quick link and boom, it takes you. Where does it take us? Astaghfirullah. A person needs iman of a brick, hardcore. When they see something fahisha, they should say, Astaghfirullah, this is not, it's not for a Muslim. It's not for a believer. It's not for a person who says, La ilaha illallah. Malki Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's a hadith Qudsi he mentioned, and I'm coming to an end and I'll mention this. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that, and this is a hadith Qudsi, Allah says that, you know, when you cast lustful, you know, lustful means when you look at someone sexually, attractively. That's poisonous arrow from shaitan. مَنْ تَرَكَهُ مَخَافَتِي أَبْدَلْتُهُ إِمَانٍ يَجِدْ حَلَاوَتَهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ This is what Allah says in the Hadith Qudsi. If a person who comes across this situation where they see someone, but then they put their nazar on, they say, no, no, no. Astaghfirullah, it's just obeying Allah. Let that happen a few times, this person will taste the sweetness of this within their heart. They will be able to taste the sweetness of Iman. Maybe not physical, but that will propel you to doing good deeds. When you look in a negative way, the ibadat which we do, the spirituality, it drops instantly. You may build up spirituality, mashallah, feel good, mashallah, Jummah happen, and soon as you go outside, mashallah, rang barangi, and all of a sudden, boom, your, 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 deen, your Iman is at, in a, is at stake. And we've already got an inferiority complex anyway because we look at English people and I'm half English so that sort of post-colonial sort of yeah you know we're, we're kind of under and we're kind of this sort of mentality and let's not even go into political side of thing we'll start up a whole hot discussion but there's this whole thing why is it fair and lovely is the hottest selling cream in Pakistan and, and across India and in, in Asia in general because you put the cream on it makes you white everyone wants to be whiter than what they are the more white you are the more attractive you are so psychologically we're already geared to think that people outside are more attractive than us or me. So khair, this is a psychology. Now let's move away from psychology and come back to this. Let's finish off on this point. Your eyes, ni'mah from Allah. Blessing from Allah. You can't put a price on this ni'mah and blessing. All Allah is saying, use it in the correct way. Bas. They're using it in the correct way. If you do make a mistake, astaghfirullah, yalla, give me tawfiq, please. And there's no wazifa, there's no medical med- medicine. The, 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 the himmat is just for you to say no and stop. And Allah will give you tawfiq. You'll find it hard the first time. 
Second time you'll find it less hard, then third time less hard, and then it will come a point in your time, يَجِدْ حَلَاوَتَهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ When you come across a woman, she can be strikingly beautiful. You don't want to look at her in a lustful way, you keep your gaze down. Allah will give you sweetness in your heart. May Allah make us like that, inshallah.